Uh, this evening at 5.35 p.m. Buenos dias, beautiful minyan. Uh, we're continuing with the laws of Purim. We said that uh, eating before uh, uh, the reading of the Megillah is not permitted. And uh, the question is, uh, ask the Kafa Chaimi also uh, in the name of the Mishnah Buah, Magin Avraham, what about uh, not eating a proper meal? What about tasting something just to, maybe you need a little sugar or something just to keep you going before the Megillah until after you hear the entire Megillah. So he says for someone that's weak, someone that's elderly, someone that's not feeling so well, they could uh, indeed eat less than a kabitza, less than a measurement of 54 grams. And uh, that for them, when there's a tzorech, when there's a need, they're allowed to eat less than a proper meal, which is a uh, kabitza, which is 54 grams. So here, uh, not only is it... Uh, Cons- the the cons- consumption of uh, solid solids like food, also drinking more than that 54, I guess, mil uh, uh, of liquid, that, that also is an issue because it satiates a person to a degree that they may also get carried away. They're already sitting down, they're already eating uh, a, a volume uh, or a, a measurement of food that may get them carried away in their meal and they may not then um, uh, hear or read the Megillah. However, ask the Kafa Chaim, what about a person that, you know, a little bit of a taster is not enough. Less than 54 grams of, of bread is not enough. Uh, they need more. They're just not well. They fasted. It's been a long day. And they want to hear the Megillah. In order to keep on going, they need a proper meal. They just, that's who they are. So he says, in such a case, of course, uh, uh, it's a pressing need. You can have someone remind you. That uh, or be there with you. Say, okay, I'll be with you. I'll pick you up to go hear the Megillah. We'll go together. I'll remind you in that way. You don't forget. And uh, that is a way around that. We're approaching Parashat Kitisa. It's a very important Parasha. We read about. Uh, we begin with reading about the measurements of the artifacts and the Mishkan and so on and so forth. Uh, but we also read about Moshe Rabbeinu uh, ascending up Mount Sinai to go and bring the Torah. And then Hashem telling Moshe Rabbeinu of, of the golden calf that the Bnei Israel uh, have sinned with. And uh, we learn a lot of very important lessons from that which Moshe Rabbeinu still goes down to deliver the tablets. Even though he knows that Am Yisrael have been sit, sinning with the golden calf, he still believes that there is something that can change within them. When he brings the tablets to them, he says, I know they sinned, but if they see it, if they see me holding the word of Hashem, maybe that there will be a flash of motivation for them to, uh, to elevate, to leave the wrong, and to start doing better. And Hashem will forgive. So even in the midst of the golden calf, Moshe Rabbeinu says, there's no way that seeing this beauty is just not going to make any impression on them. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu chooses to bring down the, uh, the tablets, even though he knows that it's, in a way, too late. But in his, in his eyes, it's not too late. And we, we learn that for, for ourselves as well. The way Moshe Rabbeinu sees us, the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees us, doesn't matter what we're engaged with. As long as we have some sort of connection to recuperate and come back or rejuvenate our spiritual well-being with holding on to anything, a small shi'ul, a daily mitzvah, to any, any mitzvah that we do for ourselves or for our families, it doesn't matter what we're engaged with at the present moment. We can bring on uh, more blessing, more spiritual abundance, and uh, by which I get closer to Hashem. Looking forward to seeing everyone on Shabbat and Shabbat Shalom on the